Two of this country's greatest orchestras, the New York Philharmonic and the Boston Symphony, are searching for new conductors. If history is any guide, it's likely that whoever is chosen will not be an American. It may simply be snobbery, but the orchestra establishment tends to look beyond homegrown talent. But one major American orchestra has recognized a maestro born in the USA, Michael Tilson Thomas of the San Francisco Symphony. As many other American orchestras struggle to hold on to an audience, San Francisco's is sold out because of the music, but largely because of the man. He stares down from the podium like some benevolent bird of prey, eyes staring past that great beak. It's all wonderfully choreographed, every gangly movement. But watch the eyes, the eyes of 95 musicians watching the eyes of the maestro. Portrait of a boy wonder at age 56. Finally fulfilling the expectations of a fickle music establishment. In the 1970s, Tilson Thomas was considered the great young hope of American classical music, a native-born prodigy who'd become a star in a single night when the ailing conductor of the Boston Symphony turned to him, his young assistant, and asked for help. He came off the stage at intermission and just looked at me and said, you, put your suit on, you're going to conduct. Just like that. And so I hesitated for a moment and do it. And I rushed off, put my suit on. Age? 24. I mean, that must have been pretty heavy stuff for a 24-year-old unknown. It was. It was, it was a, astonishing. It was intoxicating. And the music world was intoxicated. The New York Times hailed him as the next Leonard Bernstein and called him a mirror image of America's greatest maestro. Isaac Stern, the renowned violinist and president of Carnegie Hall, remembers being struck by their similarities. The two of them seemed to have huge ladles which they dipped deeply into these pots of classical music, of pop music, of show business, of, of, of ethnic music, with equal gusto and equal joy and equal understanding. Bernstein became Tilson Thomas's mentor and eventually handed him what was then the most famous baton in all of American music. The New York Philharmonic's televised young people's concerts. For this young man, the expectations were limitless. When you appear on the scene, everyone greets you as a new messiah. And then in the years that follow, there are many people who can feel uh, saddened, even perhaps betrayed by the fact that it turned out you're just a person after all. He knew so much so young. There are many things that he was curious about that others with less talent wouldn't dare allow themselves because that's not the way you do it. That's not the way it should be. The young man called the next Bernstein went his own way. The crusty musical establishment was not impressed by his charter membership in the decade of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Altogether, too free a spirit. When I took a few days off to go on the road with James Brown, just see how he actually ran his band, and some of my colleagues thought that was a shocking waste of my time, that I should have been at home studying Schubert scores. The call never came from a great American orchestra. Michael, I think in the last five, six, seven years, has sat down and taken a good look at himself. And perhaps he said why, and I think he's come up with the right answers. Some of the answers came during a long stretch as a musical journeyman, first in Buffalo, then guest conducting for a variety of orchestras and going largely unnoticed by the major critics. He had to leave the United States to command a prestigious orchestra, the London Symphony, which he conducted for eight years. Finally, at the age of 50, he was welcomed home when the call came from San Francisco. A lot of what a conductor does 
is to point out and define what now is. How long now is. Is now this? Bup, 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 bup. Each one of those is a now, 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 now. Or is it now, now, now? Or is it now, now, now? For this maverick musician, openly gay, the city was the perfect match. In six years, he turned its orchestra Good. into one of the great ones. Good. The upbeat's fantastic now. See if then, then after you got that upbeat, then do a kind of Bach thing. It is a passion for all kinds of music that drives the man. It's, it's weighty stuff. Here, this is Shostakovich, 11th Symphony. Just feel that. No major American conductor thinks about music quite the way he does. I can hear your wheels turning a little bit on the first note. You shouldn't be. I'm free, I'm free, I'm out of here. Hooray! Apart from the San Francisco, he directs the New World Symphony, a teaching orchestra in Miami Beach, where he's shaping a whole new generation of musicians. As I tell my students all the time, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, today I'm going to write a dotted half note, three triplet eighth notes, and five sixteenth notes. You can't be obsessed with trying to recreate that, what's on the page. You have to imagine what was this in somebody's guts that said, Pam, ba, 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 da, 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 You've said that you feel a profound connection with the composers whose music you play. I've spoken to other conductors. They all say that, but no one's really been able to describe what they mean by it. Let's just talk about one aspect of the music, melody. At the beginning of Beethoven's Ninth, you hear these rumblings of drums and these fanfare figures and this very sort of militaristic, battle-like music. And then it transforms into this very gentle sort of lyrical music which sounds like a kind of pastoral song of some sort and which actually it turns out yum, ba -da -dee -da -da -dee -da 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 about 50 minutes later is going to be Freude schöner Götterfunken. We have characteristic ways in the kinds of journeys we make that say a lot about us. And when you've taken these journeys many, many times through the melodies in the actual footsteps of these composers, you come to really feel that you do know them. You do know their way of getting from one place to another. You do know the little thoughts that occurred to them on the way. What was then a very famous tune called Fascination. It was fascination, I know. No one warms up a classical music audience like Tilson Thomas. Showmanship is in his genes. Thomas is a Tomaszewski, the grandson of Boris Tomaszewski, the great Russian immigrant singer and actor, who in the 1920s and 30s was a superstar in the American Yiddish theater, and legendary for his philandering. It was like Elvis in some way. When he did a play called Alexander Crown Prince of Jerusalem, women would rush the stage and rip their clothes off. It's kind of scary because very often when I used to go on tour around the United States, people would come up after the show and say, you know, we think in some way we're related to you. <laughs> Boris's wife, Bessie, was a siren of the Yiddish stage and a seductress off the stage. She lived long enough to become her grandson's theatrical muse. She said to me, you know, some people said I was a bohemian. They said I was a femme fatale. No one ever said I gave anything less than an impassioned performance. And there's no such thing as an impassioned performance without a little raw material. Michael Tilson Thomas was born in California in 1945. His father, Ted, was a gifted musician, painter, and writer. His mother, Roberta, a teacher. They both devoted much of their lives to their only child. 
By day, his father wrote screenplays for Roy Rogers movies. In the evening, he ran a salon for displaced European artists and intellectuals, an unforgettable faculty devoted to the education of young Michael. They always had surprising interests, you know, so George Tobias, the character actor, would arrive and say, God, you know, there's this guy Telemann. Man, he writes such great flute music. Or somebody else would say, boy, you know, there's this incredible uh, short story by Dostoevsky called Bobok, which would make a great little opera. Let's look at that story, you know. Or, hey, I brought you a book of Titian, kid. Let's look at this. <laughs> then, of course, the fact that it was all somehow Yiddishkeit, so I'd say, uh, to my grandma, Bessie, uh, do you know who Cardinal Richelieu was? And you say, sure, it was Uncle Greenberg. He played all those parts. <laughs> <laughs> it all sounds like a wonderful childhood. But was it also kind of lonely for a kid? There was a loneliness to it, but I savored the loneliness. I treasured that loneliness because I knew it was a time in which I could um, imagine more things about music, about just what the underlying ache was that seemed to express itself in the best music and the most haunting music. The most haunting music may be the songs that were composed by his father but never written down. A goulash of Brahms, Tin Pan Alley, and cowboy music. Using memory and a computer, his son is now trying to preserve it. It was his father, Michael says, who was the greatest musical influence on his life. Ted Thomas shied away from the spotlight. It was he who changed the Tomaszewski name. Now Michael is reclaiming it. In the Tomaszewski Project, a celebration of an uncommon American family by the last of the line. It's what I was called from the time I was a child. Everyone used to say, ah, the last of the Tomaszewskis. Here he comes. He seemed to follow his own muse, both as an artist and as a man. He has gained from it, and he's paid the price. He's, but as far as I'm concerned, he's paid his dues, and his greatest time is coming. I was once at a recording session. It was going really well. And my father was there. We were both kind of happy and teary. And I said, you know, Dad, what is this? You know, that when something is really beautiful, I just feel so happy and so sad at the same time. And I get this expression on my face, and I know that I get this from you, because you have that same expression. But what does that expression mean? And he said, that's the expression. <laughs>